What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode here at the Center for Stingray Biology. Um, we had some births and we had a loss today. Um, I will get to the loss later, but let's start with the good and show you some of the pups that we did have born over this past week. I didn't film it, but uh, let's get a, a look at them right there. We had some Bosmanis. And we had this cute little bugger born. Uh, they had three, pretty small. One was chewed up. You see a little bit chewed up right there. But this cute little guy, I'm glad that uh, they were able to survive. Let's see there. Oh, I love this guy. But anyways, I am glad that they were able to survive. I had my doubts because they were so small. They were maybe like that big. You know, I would say what? just hitting three inches maybe and they look like they're doing well they're nibbling on their food so that's a great sign if you guys are curious who the mother and father is um, I believe that one back there that's the mother and this one is the father okay let's do a quick look through at what we got here we got some uh, nice black diamonds going on there some of the Larger black diamonds, a couple of Bosmani down there, some Bosmani pups, uh, and more black diamonds right there. So we got a nice inventory of black diamonds. Um, what else? I think I showed, or maybe Rodrigo showed in his Instagram. We got a couple of Zabrina pikes here and some black, uh, not black, uh, Bosmanis. But I do apologize. I don't have lights back here yet. Um, but I'm gonna hide right here and show you we got some Arapimas and they are so well trained watch when I come and put my hand here they're all gonna come these are so cool this is the first time I had a pet Arapaima uh, with the exception of Rodrigo but they're such quick learners I've only had I had them for less than a week look they see my hand and they're all coming out um, I think maybe I should try to train Rodrigo as well, right? Here, Rod, here, Rod. Come here, boy. Come here, boy. All right. But anyways, um, let's go over into this room here. And this is where we had the loss today. Um, it's quite tragic. Always already here waiting. She's got the black ominous garbage bag. And this one, I really feel the loss. It's in this pool here and you know at first glance you may not be able to tell which one it is but it is that one right there I noticed it uh, today when I was feeding this fish wasn't moving and um, I'm pretty sure it was still alive yesterday and it was one of my favorites I've had her for a while it's pretty big it doesn't look big like that but I'm gonna pull it out and show you how massive this fish is and uh, and then we're gonna dispose of it unfortunately so um, I'm gonna let Oi take over on the camera here I'm gonna go grab some gloves and uh, try to bring this guy up all right so hang on one second yeah. all right guys so what we did here was we took a big garbage bag the one that Oi was holding before I cut it open because a lot of times when we lift a fish like that uh, that's been dead for a while um, a lot of their bodily fluids starts coming out and I just didn't want to drip that stuff all over the place all right we'll try to bring this girl up like I said um, oh, you okay I'm fine somebody calling no oh, okay. so I've had this ray here this ray has been with the Center for Stingray Biology for quite some time now it's one of our earlier animals so that's why um, I'm actually quite upset I lost this girl. Um, you know, you see, normally I'm not this upset over losing a fish, but this one, uh, see, look, it's clean on the bottom too. The thing now is, you know, Casper did tell me for a few weeks now that this fish wasn't eating well. And it's been on and off eating now for a few, more than a few weeks over a month I would say and um, you know we tried treating it before and it did get better and it started eating and it was doing good 
and only last week we cleaned up the tank and but she just wouldn't eat everyone else in this tank you see to show them why everyone else in the tank is doing great i even fed these fish with her dead at the bottom and all the rays were just like swarming over her just eating the food i think she literally just died there's no deterioration of the body can, can they see it mm. right everything is clean there's no redness nothing oh now they're getting spooked but clean no signs of disease nothing maybe old age but i mean i've had we've had rays older than this and this really is one of my favorites oh my goodness look at this guy oh huge all right, why don't you come around over here, boy. Right. It's so beautiful, look at it, show everybody. It's so clean, but you can see it's skinny, right? You see the bone structure right here? Right, the skeletal, oh, it's sinking down. All right, let, you know what, let's pull it out. All right. Nice. Okay, anyway, let me put this down here. But like I said, I showed you before, right? See, it's all clean. I'm just gonna set her down here. She hasn't eaten in quite some time. You see the skeletal structure right here? All the bones right here. This thing and this thing right here is what we call the pelvic bone. Um, maybe angle it a little bit all this way. They, they might be able to see the bone better. The tail here is very skinny. Oh, Can't sorry, go I reject. Anyways, yeah, so it's really skinny, the tail. So. I'm guessing this fish probably starved to death and why I don't know we've had her why she would starve to death obviously because she didn't eat but why did she stop eating I really have no idea we've had her for a really long time since she was small always ate well and the problems just started showing up over the past couple of months the on and off feeding and like I said everyone in the tank has also doing fine but it's such a beautiful fish and I really hate losing something like this but you know I think in this hobby in general not just ray keeping but in the fish keeping hobby who keeps calling no Is Rodrigo again all right sorry Rod I can't answer you uh, I'm in the middle of filming but I will call you right back once I'm done here so anyways like I was saying in this hobby um, fish keeping in general, losing fish is part of that, you know, is part of the hobby. And uh, I know in the past when I've showed uh, me losing some fish, you know, I've had some negative comments about it, you know. Um, but what they do have to understand is, you know, this happens. It's, it's part of the hobby. We lose fish and we learn from it and we try not to make, you know, the same mistakes and we move on. But obviously, you know, I'm not going to ignore what happened here you know of course I want to try to figure it out but even with all my experience when stuff like this happens um, you know I'm at a loss for words as well and uh, I'm not gonna dissect this one you know in the past we, we did try dissecting it um, this guy's a little bit big and it's gonna get pretty messy and I've already done a couple of dissections that's pretty much it let me go wrap this up and uh, dispose of this fish let me open the door here first. Unfortunately, you know, something like this, I don't have a yard to bury this in, so I, you know, basically I'm just gonna roll this all up. Ah, sorry girl. I was, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm so upset. And yeah, I just gotta throw it in the dumpster. That's all I can do with this thing. <sighs> Go. So, this is goodbye. Where is the Baba Dio go? Bye bye, little girl. Okay. Uh, Let me check your eye. Is it have any tear? <laughs> mm. <sighs> well, I would hate to think that there maybe there's something going on in the system over there. Come on, let's go back inside. And I really don't think it is, but I will look over all the other animals in the tank. And 
and see if there's going to be any issues. But I really, I really don't think there's going to be other issues. There's, there's other ones, you know, that were raised together, the, those bigger ones, and they're all doing fine. They come out to eat. Their tails are nice and fat. You know, I, I don't know. Is it possible for one particular fish in a system to pick up internal parasites? But generally speaking, if there's internal parasites, when they poop, there's going to be parasites in their waste that gets into the water column and then find their way to all the other animals. But I haven't had any problems with all the other animals. So I don't think it's a parasite problem. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, people just automatically jump to, oh, my fish is not eating. You got to put prosy. You got to put prosy. I don't think that's the answer, you know, unless you can confirm it maybe under a microscope that they do have parasites. But I look at the general signs, you know, and the surrounding uh, animals and how they're doing, whether they show the same symptoms. If I had more than one showing the same symptoms, then I say, okay, something is spreading here. But in this case, I don't think so. It was a singled out case. Maybe it was just her time. Maybe, you know, like people, we have internal problems, you know, organ failure or, or, or something or, or yeah, high cholesterol from such a good diet. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, high cholesterol from such a good diet. You know, we never know. Um, but, I mean, that's, that's pretty much what it is for today. And um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, there was uh, one comment that I wanted to respond to. And uh, let me go pull it up. I'll be right back. All right, guys. Before we end this video for today, um, I received an email from one of my subscribers here. And I wanted to share it with you guys and um, answer his concerns. It's semi-related, you know. Um, he was asking a question about water quality. And even though I don't think I had a water quality problem here, but I did lose a fish. Um, I did also want to address his question and I think it's something that everyone uh, would be interested in learning about. So this is from Freshwater Guru. He says, Kevin, if you are reading this, I just want to first thank you for your time. I know you're a busy guy. I also want to thank you for being such an inspiration to the hobby. Well, thank you. I keep freshwater stingrays and found you from Joey's video of your facility. I am guess he's referring to Joey Mullen, DIY King. He was here about three years ago and his those videos of my place from his channel are still going pretty strong, I believe. Okay, and let's see, where are we? Oops. Uh, da, 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 da. And now me and my wife follow your channel. My question for you is what level of parts per million for nitrates is normal for your smaller stingray tanks. Also, how much water do you change and how often? Okay, we'll get to that. I have one 15 inch male Matoro stingray in a 180 gallon tank. I find it tough to keep the nitrates under 20 parts per million without doing multiple water changes a week. And I just wanna make sure everything is normal and I'm not overfeeding. Any help would be greatly appreciated. All right. Well, freshwater guru, first of all, I don't pay too much attention to my nitrates, honestly, okay? Um, I know that you know, a lot of people do, and it's not a critical item. The critical items are ammonia and nitrite. But of course, we don't want the nitrate to get too high. But because I do major water changes and I do it twice a week, I know my nitrate levels are in check, all right? but. If you're at 20 parts per million, that is very clean. You know, you're not trying to get it to zero. It's not like ammonia and nitrite where it's toxic and could be poisonous to your fish that you want to get it down to zero. Nitrates is acceptable. I mean, I've heard of rays being kept in nitrate levels as high as 200 parts per million or 300 parts per million. They're strong animals, they, they will survive and it's not toxic to them. But, of course, we don't want to let it get into those crazy high ranges. So as long as you're doing reasonable water changes, even if you maintain it at 40, 50, 60, I still feel personally that those are acceptable levels of nitrate levels. So don't try to kill yourself by bringing it down. I used to be 
like that as well. When I first started, I was like, oh my God, I gotta keep it at zero. And I was looking at all kinds of options, getting plants into my tanks, let the plants absorb it, doing water changes. Um, I tried algae scrubbers, all that. I was trying to get my nitrates down to zero, as close to zero as possible. It is not necessary. Um, it's, you're like kind of chasing your own tail with it, especially when you have a 15 inch ray in a 180 gallon tank. Um, once the, the fish eats and poops, it's already, and, you're, and you're, your biological filtration starts breaking down that ammonia, you're already gonna have a decent amount of nitrates. That's why you have to keep changing your water all the time to get it below 20, right? So don't chase your tail so hard. As long as it's not going over 100, 120, 150, I think you're okay. You know, just don't let it go beyond that and I think you'll be good. All right, so Freshwater Guru, uh, we all have to thank you for that question. Everyone, I hope you guys learned something from that. And thank you guys for watching. I will try to um, address, you know, these kind of comments as they come in whenever I can. What? The power gonna run out. Soon. Okay, um, I will try my best to address some of these comments at the end of every video. Um, I'll pick through which one I think is appropriate. But thank you guys again. So please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.